Greetings, everyone, to the children's worship today. I am going to make the assumption that there just might be people here who've never been a part of our children's ministry before. So I'm going to introduce myself. I'm the Reverend Lisa K. Cummingore Smith, and I'm going to welcome you to First Christian Covington. When I have this moment in person, I usually have the kids start off in a moment of silence and prayer. It's a hope that we can settle ourselves down, get centered, and be able to start opening up our hearts and our minds to the presence of God and to the Holy Spirit. So I will start off with a chime and then have some silence, not too long, I promise. And then when we come out, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Are you ready? Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, I try to talk about the same thing that Pastor Tracy talks about with the parents while they're attending church upstairs. And today is the story about the Good Samaritan. If you have a Bible at home and want to read along, it's in chapter Luke 10, 25 to 37. My version is the International Children's Version. Then a teacher of the law stood up. He was trying to test Jesus. He said, Teacher, what must I do to get life forever? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? The man answered, Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Also, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus said to him, your answer is right. Do this and you will have life forever. But the man wanted to show that the way he was living was right. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? To answer this question, Jesus said, A man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some robbers attacked him. They tore off his clothes and beat him. Then they left him lying there almost dead. It happened that a Jewish priest was going down that road. When the priest saw the man, he walked to the other side of the road. Next, a Levite came there. He went over and looked at the man. Then he walked by the other side of the road. Then a Samaritan, traveling down the road to where the hurt man was lying. He saw the man and felt very sorry for him. The Samaritan went to him and poured olive oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. He put the hurt man on his own donkey and took him to an inn. At the inn, the Samaritan took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan brought out two silver coins, and gave them to the innkeeper. The Samaritan said, Take care of this man. If you spend more money on him, I will pay it back to you when I come again. 
Then Jesus said, Which one of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the man who attacked his robbers? The teacher of the law answered, The one who helped him. Jesus said, Then go and do the same thing he did. It's the end of the scripture. Go and do the same thing he did. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but the Pharisees were the priests' tribe, so they were very high up in the in the Judaic order. So they were really important people in the, in the faith. And the second guy, a Levite, was also a very special part of the tribe of Levi, and they were also trying to make sure that they stayed clean in order to do things. And um, so for their own safety, they walked to the side of the road. Now this is a Samaritan has a reputation among the people of that time as not being one of them. They did everything they could to avoid the Samaritans. And this Samaritan had empathy. He felt sorry for the man. He took his experiences and put them into the soul of that person laying there that he did not know. I think that what I really want us to focus on as much as possible in following Christ is the importance of loving your neighbor as yourself. That means A, finding out what gifts, what special talents you have and be that, and then offering them to other people. And you can expand your, your gifts by having empathy and learning from others. Our neighbors are people that we can learn and grow from and be with, and they will learn and grow with us. It's a degree of empathy and companionship that is really important in the world, in living a happy and full life. So, I will hope that what you get from this moment, this children's worship moment, is the idea that when I see somebody who needs some help, I will do whatever I can to help them. Now, little people, younger kids and things, we don't always have the gifts we can, but sometimes our awareness is what is vitally important. So if, if you don't feel like you can go to some guy on the road who's all wounded and take care of him, you're not carrying wine around or you better not be, um, what your voice is important is to tell a grown-up. Tell them, oh, I found a hurt animal over here. Oh, there's a man over here. Or, oh, look, I'm really worried about this part of our society, whatever. Your voice is important. You're not just the church of the future. Your voice is very important now. You know, your voice is important as what the Samaritan did for that man. Empower yourself to do good and to love your neighbor. And to also then take some credit for responding to that call and love yourself for it too. Be very happy and pleased with who you are because the more you are pleased with yourself, the more joy you can offer to other people, the more awareness you can give to the world. Your voice is very, very important and will always be. Never ever lose your empathy and your voice and your compassion. And then just do whatever you can do. Okay? Thank you so much for being with me here today. I'm sorry there wasn't much of an exchange, but soon we'll be back together in the house of worship, and I'll see you then, then. Love you. Love. Thank you. Bye-bye.